Did you know that the anticoagulant heparin actually got its name from the Greek word hepar for liver? Did you also know that heparin was the first anticoagulant agent to be discovered and used in medicine, and it remains a prominent and vital drug in clinical practice today? But despite being identified over a century ago, there still is debate about who should be credited for its discovery. In 1916, a second year medical student at the time named Jay McLean at John Hopkins Medical School, who thereafter became a surgeon, collaborated with a physiologist, William H. Howell, in their search for cephalins, which was believed to be a substance that promoted blood clotting that worked by neutralizing antithrombin and allowed activation of prothrombin, leading to blood clot formation. McLean made progress by isolating fat-soluble compounds known as phosphatides from dog livers that exhibited blood thinning properties in lab tests that led to excessive bleeding in experimental animals. McLean later moved to continue his research at the University of Pennsylvania. Simultaneously, Howell's laboratories continued their investigations into anticoagulants. And in 1918, Howell and medical student Luther Emmett Holt Jr. isolated another fat-soluble anticoagulant, supposedly distinct from McLean's previous findings, and coined the substance heparin, derived from the Greek word for liver, as it was initially obtained from the liver. And in 1922, Howell developed an aqueous extraction method for heparin, refining it further in 1926 when he identified a water-soluble polysaccharide anticoagulant. Despite being different from the compounds isolated in 1916 and 1918, Howell referred to this new substance as heparin as well. The water-soluble heparin was commercially manufactured, but it contained impurities that caused side effects such as headaches, fevers, and nausea, limiting its use and medical application. So in 1922, Charles Best, best known for co-discovering insulin, and a graduate student named Arthur Charles, embarked on purifying heparin to reduce or eliminate these side effects, and they also happened to demonstrate its effectiveness in preventing blood clot formation as well. By 1933, Arthur Charles and David Scott published a series of papers outlining protocols for isolating and purifying heparin from bovine liver, as well as identifying heparin in extrahepatic tissues. In 1937, Best and his colleagues published their findings demonstrating that heparin prevented thrombus formation in dogs subjected to vein trauma. And for the first time ever, on April 16, 1937, heparin in its purified form was administered to the first human being, where a saline solution containing heparin was infused into the brachial artery, resulting in significantly increased clotting time without any side effects. While all that was happening, a Swedish physiologist named Eric Jorps, who had visited Best in Canada in 1929, has published his research on the structure of heparin in 1935. This paved way for a Swedish company to start commercial production of intravenous heparin. And by 1949, Peter Maloney and Edith Taylor patented a cost-effective method to produce heparin, ensuring its widespread availability and utilization. Prior to the 1940s, Howell received most of the credit for heparin's discovery, but it became evident that Best and many others played crucial roles in its development into a clinically applicable product. It is worth noting that in 1963, a plaque was dedicated at John Hopkins University in honor of J. McLean recognizing his significant contribution to discovery of heparin in collaboration with Professor William H. Howell during his second year as a medical student, which I thought was very appropriate as I'm all about giving credit to where credit's due. If you like this video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below on a drug that you'd like to know a little bit more about, share it with a friend who you think might learn a little something from this, ring the notification bell, and remember to say no to drugs.